In this video, which is the last video for chapter six, we're gonna briefly talk about electrophoresis and isoelectric focusing. Electrophoresis is a fascinating application of what we've learned in this lecture. You can see that it is a method for separating a mixture of amino acids, proteins, or DNA. And it takes advantage of the fact that amino acids change their structure at different pHs. So that means if you have an amino acid that has lots of positive charges or is positively charged, it will migrate towards the negative end of an electrophoresis gel. If you have an amino acid that is negatively charged, it will migrate towards the positive end of an electrophoresis gel. And if you have a protein, which is a chain of amino acids, again, a positively charged protein would migrate towards the negative end of an electrophoresis gel. One very important example of electrophoresis is isoelectric focusing. Isoelectric focusing is specifically for separating molecules based on their isoelectric point. This is going to mean amino acids. All amino acids have an isoelectric point, or a pH at which the substance has no charge. Let's take a look at an example. If we have an amino acid at a high pH, it is going to be fully deprotonated. So this is the structure at high pH. At low pH, remember, it is going to be fully protonated. So this is the structure of what an amino acid would look like at low pH. And of course, if you can add an R group in here or here, and you might even get some more complicated structures. So the structure at high pH is going to actually migrate towards the positive charge. And the structure at low pH will migrate towards the negative charge. That means that if you apply a mixture to your gel, as it, move, move, as it moves towards the right, towards the high pH, it adopts the deprotonated structure, which is then attracted towards the left side. Then it starts to adopt the positive structure and starts to move towards the right side because now it's positively charged and attracted to the negative end over here. And eventually, it will go back and forth and it will find its point where it's happiest. And that is the isoelectric point. And for our amino acid, that means it's going to have both a positive and negative charge. Depending on the R group, this is going to vary for every single amino acid. And so you can see in this picture, whatever pink amino acid is, as it gets negatively charged, it starts to go back. As it gets positively charged, it starts to go towards the right. And in the middle, you have the zwitter ionic form, and that little pink band there would be the isoelectric point for pink amino acid. The isoelectric point is going to be different for each amino acid. If you look at the yellow example here, if you were to apply a mixture, yellow amino acid, when it is in high pH, it becomes negatively charged, then moves towards the positive end. At some point, it starts to get a pH that's low enough so it's positively charged, and then now it's attracted to the negative end. And it will go back and forth until it finds its perfect point. And the bottom example B here is showing all of the different ionic electric points for these amino acids. That concludes chapter six. Make sure to review the study guide and let me know if you have any questions about any of the topics that we covered in chapter six.